So guys, welcome back. This is the second part of the Go Query Crawler series. And if you've not seen part one of the video series, then I highly recommend you do that because we discussed the approach and how we're going to approach the code. And if you've seen the video, then I, I suggest you can, uh, you know, it's completely optional, but you can open it up in a new tab and, uh, you know, refer to the diagram when you write, when you look at this code with me. Uh, so because when I write the code and when you look at the diagram, it'll make a lot more sense to you because that's how, that's why I drew the diagram in the first place uh, in the previous video. And so in this uh, part two of the video series, I think we'll be able to write the entire code because with, when using Go Query, you don't have to write a lot of your code on your own because uh, as you may have seen in the previous, um, uh, there's another uh, series of uh, Go Golang crawler on my uh, channel where uh, we don't use any library and we write everything from scratch. We use Go channels and Go routines, routines and you don't have to do that uh, in the, when using Go Query, right? So the, the code will be significantly less in this case. So let's get started and uh, I'm on my Ubuntu terminal. You can be using, uh, you know, Windows PowerShell or, or Mac terminal, doesn't matter. The, the uh, commands will be the same. So we'll create a directory. Uh, we'll call it go query crawler go query. Okay. So I'll go inside my crawler go query and I'm going to go mod in it github.com slash akhil slash go query okay and we do this because we want this to be our absolute path when we want to refer to other files in this uh, in this project now in this uh, specific project uh, particular project we we don't have other files we write everything in our main.go file because the code is significantly less like i said like barely 45 50 lines i think will be done in those but still it's a good practice to have your absolute path set up like this uh, for somebody who doesn't know what absolute paths are it basically helps you uh, refer to the other files in your project so we have created our go mod uh, file and what we'll do is we'll now open up our code editor i'm using vs code you could be using anything else it doesn't matter but VS Code is, I think, uh, you know, uh, really nice when working with Golang. Uh, anyhow, we'll write our main.go file. In our main.go file, uh, you know, the first thing that we have to write is package main or whatever the name of that package might be. Okay. And then we're going to import some things. We'll import FMT because we want to print out stuff, log because we want to log out errors. We'll use net slash HTTP because we're working with the internet, the web, it's a web crawler, right? We want to make, uh, I think, get request to it. So get uh, github.com slash, uh, it's called poor keto bio, I think. Not very sure, actually. And that's where the Go Query package resides, which we'll be using to scrape today. So uh, you'd, you'd seen the diagram uh, in the previous video. So we'll be creating two functions. Right, so we are going to scrape this website called uh, golangcode.com and we'll have two functions, func main and func get latest block titles. And all we want to do is we want to get the latest block titles from that from that website, all right? So let's start writing our func main. Func main and then we'll have a variable called block titles and we'll have error and we'll call our latest uh, block titles function, which we have not written yet, but we'll write this function. And in this function, we're going to pass uh, the link of the website that we want to, uh, I think it's called golangcode.com. We want to scrape this website, basically. And if there is an error, which means if error is not equal to nil, right? So from after calling this function, we, there, there are two possible things, right? That could happen. One is that you could get the block titles. This function returns the block titles or this function will return an error. So if the error is not nil, which means there is an error that was returned, we will log out the error, print ln error. Okay. And then format package we'll use to print out the blog titles. Okay, and then we'll use it again to write, print out the block titles. 
this variable which will have the list of all the block titles okay so we'll print out the block titles and now uh, is the main uh, you know part of this program which is writing the get latest block titles function so yeah so g capital get latest block titles okay and it accepts a url we passed a url right https colanco.com and it returns a string and an error we know that because it returns a string and an error right we already know that and now we'll make a request to the url right so we'll have a response the request that we'll make will give us two different things one will be the response or it could be an error okay and http dot get url we use the http package here to make a get request to the url that has been passed to this function and we'll get the response here in this resp uh, variable if there is an error which means if error is not equal to nil then we'll return the error we'll return the error here okay and the error will be logged out and uh, but if the error is not there then this is what we'll do we'll use the go query package and we'll say new document from reader which is a function inside the go query library and we'll pass the response dot body so the response that we'll get here after putting our request right the response dot body we'll pass it to go query dot new document from reader go query is by the way the package that we're going to use to process this so there's an is equal to here sorry my bad and now we want to check if so it returns two things like i said right it can either return an er error or a doc so if it returns uh, an error which means the error is uh, not equal to nil we're just simply going to return the error the error is returned to this function sorry this function and from this function it is returned to this function right so the error comes here and then gets logged out and so we'll have titles equal to nothing empty string and we'll say doc dot find the doc which is basically you know the team document from reader so in that document we can find for particular ids in our case the id is post title so for each of those post titles we'll run a function and we'll pass a um, pointer to go query dot selection okay and now we'll write that function we'll say titles plus equal to we'll put these dash there plus s dot text plus new line okay and then we'll return titles and nil if there's no error right we'll, we'll return all the titles so we took titles as an empty string and we got the doc uh, which was processed to us uh, with the help of go query library the function which we used was new document from reader where we passed the response dot body that uh, we got when we sent a request uh, in a get request to this uh, url the response body was passed to this function like i said and we got something uh, we either got an error and if the if there was an error we handled it if we got something back in doc uh, we used uh, the find method and we found the post titles which are the ids that we use on this website to represent all the titles of the new uh, the blog posts and we'll use doc.find and for each of these post titles we'll run this function right where we'll say titles we'll keep adding the titles s dot text right all the titles s by the way is uh, a pointer to the go query dot selection right and the text that we get from there we'll add that to our titles and then we'll return that titles right along with nil which is 
if we reach this far then that means there was no error so it's nil right so if the error is nil and this won't be run then we'll reach here directly so that's the code i uh, am i think that is it let me go over it once more and then we'll try running it and then even if there are errors which uh, usually there are errors right <laughs> so we'll handle them it's not a problem uh, but for uh, as of now everything looks okay to me i mean i don't see any spelling mistakes blah 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 press dot uh yeah i don't see any errors or any spelling mistakes or any typos or any uh, and if i have missed out any is equal to signs everything seems to be okay so what we can do is we can i think go ahead and uh run the code so i hope you can see this right i hope you can see my uh terminal window and i'm going to uh go ahead and run the code and now for obviously it's not going to run because i have not added my uh, go query package right so it's going to give me that error so it says this package is required I, c I think I can say go more tidy yeah so I could have said go get in this package or I could just said uh, go more tidy and it'll get the package all the packages that are there in my file for me now let's say go run main.go yeah so it says there's some error right it says command line arguments main 27.48 so now we'll have to fix that error 27.48 so i think the error is here response.body the b should be capital <laughs> right so now let's if we head over to our uh terminal everything should work because that's, i think that's what it said it, it says it has no field or method body but it does have body with the b capital right so the errors are quite clear i mean in the sense you don't have to like think a lot So now hopefully it should work it's taking way too long yeah so it was able to get all the block titles from the website golangcode.com so everything works perfectly and uh, you can stay subscribed to this channel so that you get to see more of these awesome videos and thanks a lot for watching and i hope you learned a lot in this